Hello, everyone. This is Professor He. Nice to see you again. The topic of this task is about the Brayton cycle and the optimization. The Brayton cycle was first proposed by George Brayton for use in the reciprocating oil burning engine that he developed around 1870. Today, it is used for gas turbines only where both the compression and expansion process take place in rotating machinery. Firstly, let's have a brief introduction for the gas turbine. Gas turbines usually operate on an open cycle as shown in figure 10.27. Fresh air and ambient conditions is drawn into the compressor, where its temperature and pressure are raised. The high pressure air proceeds into the combustion chamber, where the fuel is burned at constant pressure. The resulting high temperature gases then enter the turbine, where they expand to the atmospheric pressure while producing power. The exhaust gases leaving the turbine are throwing out, causing the cycle to be classified as an open cycle. The two major application areas of gas turbine engines are aircraft propulsion and electric power generation. When it's used for aircraft propulsion, the gas turbine produces just enough power to drive the compressor and a small generator to power the auxiliary equipment. The high velocity exhaust gases are responsible for producing the necessary thrust to propel the aircraft. Gas turbines are also used as stationary power plants to generate electricity and stand along units or in conjunction with steam power plants on the high temperature side. In these plants, the exhaust gases of the gas turbine serve as a heat source for the steam. The gas turbine cycle can also be executed as a closed cycle for use in nuclear power plants. This time, the working fluid is not limited to air and a gas with more desirable characteristics can be used. The open gas turbine cycle just described can be modeled as a closed cycle as shown in figures 10.28 and 10.29 by using the air standard assumptions. Here, the compression and expansion process remain the same, but the combustion process is replaced by a constant pressure heat addition process from an external source, and the exhaust process is replaced by a constant pressure heat rejection process to the ambient air. Compared with the former reciprocating internal combustion engines, the compression and expansion process of gas turbine engine take place in rotating machinery. The ideal cycle that the working fluid undergoes in this closed loop is the Brayton cycle, which is made up 
of four internally reversible process. One, isentropic compression process from state one to state two. Two, constant pressure heat addition process from state two to state three. Three, isentropic expansion process from state three to state four. Four, constant pressure heat rejection process from state four to state one. Now, we introduce some terminologies for gas turbine engines. The first is the pressure ratio for the compressor. The second is the temperature ratio of the cycle. The third is the bankwork ratio of the gas turbine engine. Secondly, let's talk about the thermal efficiency for gas turbine engines. By definition, the heat addition and the heat rejection are Based on the process, the temperatures for the states are By definition, the thermal efficiency for the ideal Brayton cycle can be expressed as substituting and simplifying yield. The thermal efficiency increases with the pressure ratio and the limitation is also the color efficiency between T1 and T3. The fact is that T2 increases with the pressure ratio and the limitation is T3. The highest temperature in the cycle, T3, is limited by the maximum temperature that the turbine blades can withstand. This also limits the pressure ratios that can be used in the cycle. Thirdly, let's talk about the cycle optimization. The optimal compression ratio is the compression ratio at which the cyclic specific network reaches maximum. By definition, the cyclic specific network for the bridging cycle is for the fixed inlet temperature T1 and the fixed combustion temperature T3, we find that the cyclic specific network increases with the pressure ratio, reaches a maximum, and then starts to decrease. Substituting the state temperatures and following the width having been used before, the derivatives are, we find there exists indeed maximum specific cycle network. Setting the first derivative to zero, the optimum end compression temperature is Since the end compression temperature can also be expressed as Now let's talk about the optimization results the first is the optimum pressure ratio, and it is. The second is the maximum dimensionless cyclic specific network, and it is. It's found only depending on the temperature ratio. The last is the optimum thermal efficiency, and it is. It is also found only depending on the temperature ratio. Okay, that's all for this task.
Thank you very much and see you next time.